Welcome back, champions. My name is Dylan, and I am coming to you live from the Codename Entertainment streaming studio slash closet uh, located in beautiful Victoria, BC, Canada. Uh, we have some fun stuff set up for you and for the show today, but before I begin, I would like to thank Dungeons & Dragons for allowing us to join you each week on the official D&D Twitch channel. Uh, it is and will always be an honor to be here. Uh, and shout-outs to Erica and Clive for all their help co-producing and moderating our show. Uh, we have some winners to announce for our Gleam Contest uh, for uh, these Icons of the Realms. Uh, 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 Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage standard booster packs. Uh, I will share those names after our interview today, speaking of. Uh, speaking of interview, uh, my guest today hails from across the pond, uh, uh, where when he's not busy killing off his D&D character right before they make their video game debut, uh, he is an editor at the Yogg's Cast who played some D&D off and on with a show called High Rollers. Uh, before permanently joining the lineup, uh, you may know him as Amadeus Fink on Twitch and on Twitter, or you may be more familiar with his characters, uh, uh, Reynard Fairhorn from High Rollers Lightfall. Uh, but really, we're here to talk about the recently deceased Kilik. Uh, bard cleric and now idol champion. So everybody, uh, say hello and please welcome Tom Hazel to the stream. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, there I am. Uh, there you how are. are you doing? I am um, well today. How are you? Bristol, <laughs> in my bedroom. You know, you mentioned the closet. I'm in my bedroom. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, this room yeah. is probably a tiny bit bigger, but not a huge amount. Like yeah. the green well, screen hides the fact that like I could reach back and punch the wall behind me. So. Oh no! I could actually, I could punch this poster here if you wanted to. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm doing very, very well. Yeah, Excited welcome, to welcome to the show. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, like, I mean, you could have picked a better time to kill off Keelik, but you know, that's all right. <laughs> I didn't kill him. I didn't kill Quill. Okay, it was a bad series of events, and yeah, I mean, it was terrible timing, sure, but. It probably made more people want to want to come into the game, and you know that this is where he's alive. It's true. It's true. Uh, I mean, I'm, I should probably be using a formation with him, but I was doing one of uh, uh, one of our uh, moderators slash community leaders does these this series of challenges. Oh, uh, I where, saw those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The uh, idle trials, it, and so this is yeah. my my Minsk and Naeli combo trying to get as far as they can in the Ring of Regeneration. Oh, and nice. apparently so is they it just those two you're allowed to use, or uh, well, you just you pick two for the I think it's called Stronger Together. Uh, you just okay. pick two champions, and that's it. So they're the ones I picked for this. I haven't used any potions okay. or anything. Um, Very nice. Yeah, uh, so they made it to 152. Um, I feel oh. like I could use potions and stuff to get further, but... Uh, uh, it's cheating, right? A, a little bit, although with the idle trials you can. Um, the real trick is to use it with weekend buffs, um, because then oh, okay. you can, uh, uh, with the buffs, get further, because, like, hey, your combo's there. So I'm just going to complete this adventure. Oh, I mean, the real trick is to use some Eroic Synergy. <laughs> yeah. You want to use Naela and Quill. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to pull up a Naela and uh, a Quill formation in a second once this... Very uh, nice. Once this is done doing its thing and doesn't crash, despite the fact that I've left this running for a really long time. <laughs> um, very nice. Load up. Yeah, Quill event. is very cool in this game. I'm really excited. I'm really glad that he's he's made it into the game, and also really glad that he's uh, as powerful as I think he is. I'm not sure how he necessarily lines up against the um, competitors, but I, uh, I'm I really love him as a character in this game, and his abilities are so so cool. I've found uh, Quill to actually be quite strong, which is which is nice. Um, it it can be difficult to balance around, you know, forty. Six characters, I think we're at now. Oh, man, um, yeah, is that where? No, Elizabeth. I was a, a little bit scared when I found out he was in slot. Is it slot five with a? Cal is it Calliope? Is that how you pronounce it? Calliope. Uh, Calliope. Yeah. Um, Calliope. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. There's an. Calliope. And so I was I was corrected on that by uh, Lauren Urban uh, the first time I messed it up on stream because oh, okay. uh, it's the name of an actual instrument. <laughs> So, oh, right. uh, so there is like it is supposed to be pronounced a specific way, which I didn't know uh, up until Calliope. that point. Okay, well, yeah, but I, I uh, really enjoyed her in the formation. So when I found out that I'd have to get rid of her to put Quill in, I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know, I, I, I really like her, but also Quill. Yeah. 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 So what um, was the experience like for you working with the uh, the artists and the the dev team to put it together? Oh, it was extremely easy because uh, obviously we've got. Um, uh, Nina in the office who does a lot of the uh, artwork for High Rollers and 
did things like this poster and all of the character art. So yeah. Um, so when we were sending stuff forward and saying like, you know, what's your inspiration for the character? We were like, it's 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 this. It's it's literally <laughs> this is the character. Um, so it was very easy. Uh, I was uh, we saw the character Quill in like different perspectives as yeah. a result of being idol champions. Like there's the front on view, um, which I was a little worried about because I. Every time you look at a bird straight on, you kind of get that weird, like the eyes are way off to the side. And yep. I was really worried about what it was going to look like, but the artwork is incredible. I'm really, really happy with what Quill both looks like and how he plays in Idol Champions as well. Um, yeah. His ability is very cool. Um, and a lot of people say, wait, this this Quill actually heals? Hmm. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's very, very fun as well. So... Uh... Uh, so why doesn't Quill heal? <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> he does sometimes. He, the, the, the ability he's got, the Prayer of Healing, is probably the one he's actually used the most in Aroas. And um, I don't know. It It's tough for me because I came from playing Reynard, who is a ranger. Uh, yeah. At the time I was playing him as an unearthed arcana ranger who have these incredibly high damage dealing abilities. And they didn't really use spells. Yeah. So to go from him to... A cleric and a bard, um, and suddenly having to worry about spell slots, it's it's weird. And I'm so used to dealing tons and tons and tons of damage from a level 15, 16 character. Yeah. That I saw Guiding Bolt and I was like, that's the one I want to use. <laughs> but I could also save my team's life, but Guiding Bolt. Um, there's there's just a there's a lot of really cool things you can do with clerics, and I tend to do. I tend to go for cool rather than support. <laughs> it's a it's an interesting mindset to get in. I find um, I don't personally play a healer a lot in D anD D, but I have yeah. one. In, I have one, a cleric in my current like home campaign with my friends, and um, getting used to not being the one who gets to hit something hard and fill that supporting role and doing yeah. what you can to uh, manipulate the context, whatever's going on, to to suit your team is kind of a different way to play then uh, yeah then... Well, it's the same with katie as well because she used to play as a druid who could do everything like yep. she, if you wanted to tank something she's an earth elemental if she wanted to heal she just comes out of that and heals everyone for a stupid yep. amount of uh, and now she's playing ayla and it's just i want to hit this thing really hard and that's all she has to worry about and mm -hmm. um i know that she's really enjoying playing a barbarian whereas i sometimes struggle with <laughs> the mindset of what I'm meant to be doing and how I'm meant to be doing it yeah. and when I'm meant to be doing it. Um, it's tough sometimes, but I'm really enjoying playing uh, a cleric anyway. Uh, I feel like it fits very well with Quill, and as a character, I really enjoy playing him. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll take the sacrifice of losing tons and tons of damage and dying early. Um, <laughs> uh, one, of the, one of the people in chat was like, Quill is an absolute darling, and I'm thrilled he's in game now. Um, oh, that's a uh, wolfy kid. Oh yeah, very nice. I'm I'm glad glad people are enjoying him so much. Um, and yeah, I, I like I say, I, I love playing him. He's such a such a gentle, sweet, sweet boy. And <laughs> um, yeah, I I'm I'm sort of. I think the party is kind of beelining towards that hashtag save quill. Um, so <laughs> Good. Get him back as soon as possible. Good. Um, I, was, I, was, I was trying to get that sign up during the show at the descent. I'm like, eh. and it's like quickly drawn <laughs> yeah. in crayon as I ran over to do that in between things. So yeah, yeah. it's. Um, I think it didn't really show up on camera either. No, uh, no. I I, I checked later because I'm like, I don't think the camera can see through the window that clearly. But that's uh, fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we'll, we'll try and make it a thing, or I'll try and make it a thing, and then uh, hashtag save quill. We'll get it. We'll get it trending, right? I, I don't know how this works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you just say it online, and then it happens i don't know that's how the internet yeah. works i think i mean it's uh i think it's more up to the people in chat rather than us yeah no doubt uh so uh, i ask uh, everybody who comes on the show the same like sort of series of questions around their character um, okay and you're fortunate in that you have more than one now but i i guess it also gives us an opportunity to shift the question a little bit in that um you know, which parts of Tom Hazel are you manifesting as Quill? And as oh. an extension, um, you know, how were how are you uh, uh, manifesting as uh, as Reynard as well? Like, 
you know, because I personally I find it impossible not to man like draw something from yourself to play a character. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah uh, definitely. Um, you know, what part of you mean, are you expressing playing each of the two two characters? How is it different? Uh, yeah, so Reynard was, um, and we'll probably touch on this later. Reynard was the first character I ever made for a D and D campaign. Like I'd never played it before, um, so. When I made that character, I basically made him like I make every RPG character. Like I've played Dragon's Dogma with the same sort of character. World of Warcraft, I always played like a hunter in exactly the same style. And I always go yeah. for that massive mustache and really pompous and prince-like <laughs> gear. And I, I love it so much. And um, it's it's basically just that egotistical, like really, really uh, obtuse kind of nature with Reynard. Um, which I think I have quite a lot of, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, but also his fearfulness and total lack of experience where he does dumb things. And again, I'll, I'm happy to admit that one. <laughs> That's me too. Um, whereas Quill is a lot more of that meek and, and timid nature that he takes a step back and is kind of like... I don't know. There's a lot more. I think I feel like there's a lot more of me in Quill um, as a person. Where you know I'm not a presenter and I'm not an actor and I'm not. I'm an editor who sits behind a monitor all day. Yeah. Um, so you know I, I'm very much an introvert and that's what Quill is. Um, and I feel like that's kind of the element that goes into Quill. It's so much easier for me to play him because he's much more like me than Reynard was. Um, okay. Whereas all the one-shot characters, that's where I just go really dumb and do something totally different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, because I've got 12 episodes. I can do what I want at that point. And uh, does that make them more memorable or less memorable for you? Like, how, how does how does your attachment to the character go uh, if you have a short-term character versus the long-term ones? Um, it depends, really, because... Um... When I so with the recent miniseries that we did, the Rogues Gambit, we I, I, I played this character called Bertie, who was this uh, I want to say extremely dumb. His intelligence stats weren't that low, but I made him a lot dumber than he was meant to be. Um, <laughs> and I had that attachment to Bertie because I just really loved playing him and loved putting him in really weird situations and getting him to do really dumb things. Yeah, but. Ultimately, you know, it was again like a 12, 12 episode thing. Whereas Quill, I've been playing him for 38 episodes, I think now. Yeah. Um, something like that. And also his story, like I've got this huge plan for him that I want him to do all these different things. And he's got this massive backstory that I spent weeks thinking about. And uh, I really am, I'm, I'm rooting for Quill, obviously, uh, but a lot more than I would a one shot character. Yeah. Um, like I really want good stuff to happen for him because I just I just love him. I, he's he's just a bigger part of me than any other character in a in a one shot could be. Um, he's he's great. I, I love him. I love him too much. <laughs> uh, you were mentioning that you uh, spent weeks on his backstory. Uh, is there anything from that that you can share? Um, well, it's 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 difficult to say because when we're making characters. Uh, in high rollers, I feel like um, like Kim, for example, I know she spends a lot of time on her backstories, like with uh, essays worth of uh, information and all yeah. these different names and all these different things. I don't quite do that. I kind of have his story in mind, um, but a lot of the details I kind of let Mark fill in um, because I also want to be surprised when it happens. Mm -hmm. um, so there's something in his backstory that could mean that he was either betrayed or something like that by someone. I don't necessarily know if that's a hundred percent true because at the same time, Quill doesn't a hundred percent know if that's true. And I don't know if Mark has made that happen or not. And if it does happen, great, cool. Then that's, that's sort of planned by me, but still a surprise. Um, yeah, it, it's difficult to say how much backstory I can say because I don't know. I don't know 100% of it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's what I like about it. It's the same with um, with Reynard as well. When um, when we were playing him, or when I was playing him, because when I first joined with him, he was just like a month long character. Mm -hmm. um, like I was meant to be just a guest for a 
quite a while. Uh, um, but then, so I, so I made a character that was like, okay, here's, here's just a one-shot character. He's just a thing. He's a gimmick. Mm -hmm. um, and then the month rolled by and then I came back and then I came back again and then I kept coming back. <laughs> and then Mark finally said, I, do you want to, join like <laughs> you've been here long enough now and i was like oh cool that's great but i haven't really fleshed out this character at all he's not really a thing uh he was just a gimmick <laughs> um yeah so then mark made up a load of stuff and when it came uh around to uh one of my favorite episodes of high rollers when we met reynard's family or rainy's family uh it was just such a great moment because it was me and mark just bouncing off of each other all these weird ideas just out of nowhere mm -hmm. um and and I, I really love that that sort of giving Mark the freedom to just take my character and do really cool things with him because I I can trust him to do that as well. Um, yeah. So you tend to you tend to paint the backstory with broad strokes, and uh, just... yeah, very very broad strokes. Yeah. Um, I I don't even think I have names for most of the people in his backstory. <laughs> oh really? Okay. Cool. Um, I think there's, there's a, like a rough idea, um, but nothing like, again, nothing like what, what, what Kim does where she's got, you know, the, the road she lived on and the number of the house and <laughs> her favorite food and all these different things. I'm sure they're in there somewhere. There's, there's, you know what? There's one in every group, the person who puts in, uh, you know, a thousand percent effort coming up with the character and the design. Yeah. And, you know, and, uh, and it's, it's done really well for her character, but I don't have, I don't have the mental energy to come up with all of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I'm really excited to see what happens with Quill. Uh, if he comes back. And again, it's still an if. Um, as much as we'd love it to. Not certain yet. Yeah, series series finale episode finally shows up. Oh, again yeah. After. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. In like 40, 50 episodes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I don't actually know how long this is going on for. It could be going yeah. on even longer than Lightfall did. And uh, uh, on that note, actually, so, you know, obviously when your character dies, you don't get booted off the show. So... You know, obviously, it's a surprise a surprise to you as well uh, uh, when there is yeah. a, a character death. Uh, do you just like? Do you have a like? Because I tend to be somebody I always have at least one backup character that like might fit for a campaign. <laughs> I just kind of like possibly ready to go with enough of a backstory that they can fit in. Or like, did you just kind of go huh? And then like turn around and just start rolling dice like right afterwards? Like, how did, <laughs> what is the experience much, yeah, like for it you? Was, um... I think it was the week before. I think I can't remember if um, Quill died just after TwitchCon or just before. Um, but oh yeah, it was just after TwitchCon, and we spent the entire time in Germany. And Mark was teasing us because we'd taken a break just after a pretty big cliffhanger where we just walked into this room and this really cool boss with like a red broadsword came in. Um, and then all right, we're going to have to stop there. And then we had a two-week break. And during that break, Mark was saying like so. You know, you should probably come up with your backup characters now. Um, <laughs> like he does. He, he likes to do that thing where he's just constantly poking us and prodding us and making us more terrified than we necessarily should be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that entire that entire weekend, uh, you know, he was saying you should come up with a backup character just in case. You never know because Quill's gone down a hundred times now. Um, <laughs> and I never did. I, I didn't. And then the week after, <laughs> the week after is when Quill unfortunately uh made some bad strategic decisions in a boss battle and ended up uh, falling so yeah i did pretty much go home immediately after and just oh what do i want to do what do i want to play what sort of facet of my personality do i want to have in my next character yeah um, and also a character that i could potentially be playing for a lot longer if quill doesn't come back so yeah. it was very tough um but Piri um, is a very cool character, and I'm uh, excited to see more of his stuff. He's got some secrets as well uh, that I haven't quite explored in the series just yet, but then he's only been in a couple of episodes. Um, and I'm really enjoying playing him as well. Never played a monk before. Yeah. So, again, going back to Massive Damage Dealer, should be a nice, a nice break from spell slots. Monks are broken. Uh, once they get rolling. Oh, well, <laughs> well, like, you can run on water and up walls and catch arrows and, like, punch a bazillion times a turn and stun people with them and, like, all kinds of just shenanigans. Yep, They're, uh, yep. and I'm yeah. very excited to exploit all of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've always been a big fan of catching arrows and throwing them back. Uh, that's one of the cool. I haven't parts. quite done that just yet. I did deflect one, but I didn't, I didn't want to spend too many key points. Mm. Uh, 
yeah. after burning so many spell slots, I'm trying to be conservative. Uh, hopefully, he'll make me a better player, so this won't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you have to you have to miss those opportunities as a class in order to start remembering that you need to be like, oh, I need to react to whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I, I didn't uh, actually catch which subclass you went with with that one. I just I just know that uh, it's that a was a um, fire genasi, right? Monk? Yeah, fire genasi, sun soul monk. Oh, uh, okay. Um, and he's been kind of reflavored a bit so that the radiant damage is fire damage. Oh, cool. Um, so that just makes it a little that bit... That makes sense. For his character. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, hopefully that will come about a lot more with him. I, I, what I do want to see him as a, a slightly higher level, just to see him go really crazy on something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just... It's, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a damage dealing class that can also tank yeah. and move hilariously fast. They move so fast. Yeah, so. I, well, when I made him, that, that's the entire point of his characters. He's meant to be extremely quick and speedy. And um, uh, I, I think I rolled his stats pretty bad, but I was hoping to take the mobile perk. Uh, yeah. Feet, sorry. Um, and that would have given him like 50 feet of movement base. Mm -hmm. And then he can dash and do all these other crazy things. Uh, my plan is to make him eventually be able to just zoom back and forth <laughs> instantly in one turn yeah um but yeah it's it's i'm really excited to see what what sort of things he'll be able to do in the future <laughs> um but yeah why uh why monk this time uh it was just as a as an alternative to another damage dealing class i really really like playing the ranger um mm -hmm. with multi-shot and all of these different really cool abilities and also uh I, I just love picking that something. I think there's something wrong with me when I make my characters. <laughs> um, so obviously Quill had one arm, like an Aarakocra who couldn't fly. Um, when I made Bertie for the one shot thing, he had two left fists. Um, <laughs> and and this time he's got nothing majorly like wrong with his character, but he, there's now no healers on the team. And I think a lot of people were thinking, oh, he's done with cleric maybe he'll go for druid or something like that and it wasn't to subvert expectations it was because i wanted to play a damage healing class and yeah. also i just don't like min maxing <laughs> yeah um i, I just didn't want to feel like i was forced to play a healer because we didn't have a healer yeah um <laughs> I've, I've drawn that straw before <laughs> yeah yeah um but hopefully you know if you if you kill them quicker you heal less right this is also true um, it also uh, it presents some really fun stuff for uh, DMs uh, when the party doesn't have a healer. Because uh, yeah. if you can't afford healing potions, then, well. <laughs> well, healing potions. So there's a bit of a, uh, a sore spot at the moment about healing potions. Um, oh, yeah? And you'll be, you'll be upset about this as well. Uh, there was one person who, when I was downed, was making a medicine check on me. Um, when Quill was down, sorry. Yeah. And they failed the medicine check, and I was like, oh, okay, just a series of bad events. It was meant to be. Turns out that person, Araya, played by Rhiannon, uh, had two healing potions on her. Oh, so, yeah? She just didn't think to use it? Didn't think to use it. And she. <laughs> uh, I found out about it the week after, and I had to. It was like on stream, so I had to not flip the table. <laughs> but I was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gonna have to stop for a second here while I really process who's my friends here. <laughs> um, oh, that's hilarious! But yeah, that was a that was a fun moment for me when I found out. Oh, oh that's funny. I, I mean, I, everybody makes those kinds of mistakes playing, which is oh yeah, I've, I've made much worse mistakes, yeah. so I can't be angry about it. But it's just like one of those things where, like, oh, <laughs> it's could have could have just read the read your equipment. Oh. Yeah, and there's also like, you know, maybe the character does or doesn't want to do something, or maybe that you know, like you like sometimes I'll roll to see if my character remembers to do something or if they like like an option or not because I'm like I could be yeah. I could go either way. I'm like oh, I'll flip a coin on this one. I'm like oh I don't like that, and so I just like I play that off. So it's just like yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I love um, RPing those moments of of just actively trying to not actively trying to screw over your team but just putting in that extra dedication for the role play uh, yeah. of your character um it i i i 
I really don't like those sort of min-max campaigns where people got like the perfect characters and they're the ideal yeah. heroes. I, I I feel like people get more attached to the um, the more just flawed characters and the characters that end up in really tough situations. Mm -hmm. um, and if they were if they were perfect, then no one would like them. Um, so yeah, I, I love just RPing those moments of just like, yeah, no, I, he didn't actually. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. So, um, let's talk about the descent. Uh, okay. Cause, uh, you guys were among the, the, the groups that got to join the, uh, the, like, I guess the, the like the flagship marquee D and D event of the year where they, yeah, you know, they had very, very fun, many podcasts and live shows, like tons of casts there broadcasting all weekend. Um, what was the experience like for you? Um, because um, I know my experience was standing in a, small area for a like, huge amount of it so i didn't see the event the way that i did last year yeah yeah um so it was my first time in america first time in la um hmm. and for me the experience was basically just running around looking at all these things that i know through media um like i could uh i like went through la and i was like oh this this road is so wide how are the roads so wide is that a school bus and <laughs> loving every single moment like yeah you know, Dunkin' Donuts uh, was just the best for me. I loved every moment of it. And seeing all these really cool things that I just only imagined was, there's no way it's actually like that in America if I'm just watching some TV show about it. Oh, yeah. No, it, is. it is. It really is. It's amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, the D&D &D event was very, very fun. And it, uh, first time I got to go to anything like that, because last year with uh, Stream of Many Eyes, it was Mark that went to that. Yeah. And... Um, uh, yeah, it was it was really cool to meet uh, all these people who I normally only interact with from afar, uh, like you guys as well. I haven't met you prior to D and uh, D Live. It's true, yeah. It was very very fun to meet all these people um, and getting to play in uh, the Descent and even all the um, other things that we got to do, like the arena and the role play roulette. Oh, how was that? Um, actually, I, I missed that altogether. I didn't get to see any of it. Oh, it was good. It was it was it was a lot of fun. So. Um, if you're not aware, Roleplay Roulette is where you're just given a random character to play for the hour. And um, in this, we were uh, in a arena that was being run by, uh, I have suddenly forgotten his name. Uh, I'll, I'll, it will come back to me, I've totally forgotten. But um, yeah, so the characters we were given were all from film. So there was like the bride from Kill Bill and oh, yeah. uh, Sherlock Holmes was one of them. I didn't get that one. I didn't get that British guy. I didn't get Morgana. Uh, I got the Spanish guy. I got Zorro. <laughs> it would have been so yeah. much easier if I just got Sherlock. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was a lot of fun. And we got to do some really cool things with each of the characters interacting in really fun ways. Um, yeah, it was great. And playing with those people as well, uh, it, was, it was a great experience because normally being so far away in England, uh, it's, it's very much just am I going to play with Mark or am I not going to play? Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is a bit of a shame, but yeah, it was great to play with, with new people and with people I've know I'd know from so many other streams as well. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, I know. Uh, the, the descent was great as well. Um, with the start of the new mini series. That's going to be exciting. Yeah. Um, um I was going to say, uh, I know that Mark was, uh, he was playing as part of the off the table session at Stream of Many Eyes. And so he was like, he got to RP a whole bunch. And even, okay. I remember he even actually, uh, uh, what was it? They were like doing their event in the Waterdeep set. And then eventually they get the Stone of Galore. And then he ran out of the studio and he ran onto oh. one of the live shows in another room while they were broadcasting. And he just handed it to one of the players at random the <laughs> character. He's like, keep this safe or something. And he ran off, just like totally messing with somebody, some other DMs game. Oh man. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I, I just remember when he was, he was talking uh, uh, this year about how he's like, I didn't get to play in anything. I just got to, I got to DM. I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, and then you get to hang out with the cast from Critical Role and be on their shows and a bunch of other stuff uh, and hang out in LA for an yeah, extra week. So I feel like you did all right. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, he stayed a couple of extra week, uh, an extra week, sorry, just to yeah. do all those cool things. Because I know that he's really good friends with those guys and he's been there before and everything. So yeah. it was great for him to uh, stay there for a little longer and finally 
get to play with the people he wants to play with rather than the ones he's forced to play with. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a it's one of those those DM things where you love all your children equally regardless. Like every group is fun to play with in some way. So Yeah, he, he yeah. doesn't like us being referred to as children. He very specifically <laughs> doesn't like us calling him our dungeon daddy. Um, oh. I can see why. Hashtag see dungeon why. daddy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't make that one a thing. He will not <laughs> forgive me for that one. Um, uh. But yeah, we uh, obviously we keep calling him that because, you know, he well, like when we went to Berlin, he took us to the zoo and it was great. Oh, really? <laughs> and he was like, oh, come on, we'll go get ice cream. Let's go. So he really is the, the <laughs> daddy of the group. Um, um, maybe just a dad. Maybe dad is a little bit more appropriate. <laughs> and then you guys... Uh, 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 well, nobody embarrassed themselves at the D and D Beyond uh, uh, pre-party. Um, no one. Uh, no, no. I didn't. Well, I, I didn't see it. Um, though I had okay. a few. Uh, and by the time we got to the hive of scum and villainy, I went from pretty sober to pretty not. And mm. uh, <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. uh, apparently, I was stopped from going on stage to sing Metallica. So thanks, Eric. And, oh, <laughs> and then I walked. I walked. Uh, walked back and ranted about Blade Runner for an hour. But um, uh, what was the experience like for you guys? There were a lot of there were a lot of parties and you know well <laughs> so it was a uh, I'll say one thing um, you measure your shots very differently in America <laughs> that's uh, that's that's as far as I am willing to go with that one yeah yeah uh, it was a it was a it was an experience um, yeah. and uh, Trop for example didn't actually realize that the hive of scum and villainy was a totally separate bar he thought it was a different room. Oh um, yeah, well, it's a pretty short walk. Remember. Well, it's short, long enough to remember the distance. Uh, he <laughs> didn't remember the distance. Um, yeah. It was it was an interesting experience for everyone there, and <laughs> uh, I'll leave it to to Trot to tell the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll bug him about that sometime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I absolutely. Won't. Uh, uh, every, everybody's uh, uh, had experiences that are similar. Um, yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> But I guess the the real highlight, at least based on uh, everybody's uh, reactions on social media, was going to medieval times. Yes. Oh man, that was that was very cool. That was something that Mark uh, kept bugging us about, like weeks in advance to going to LA. He just found this thing. Uh, I guess is it like a Renaissance fair? I don't really. Uh, there was a, a Renaissance fair on at the same time this year, actually. Oh, okay. Um, I think um, it was either that or, the, or medieval times we were going to go to. We ended up going to medieval times, and it was it was an experience. It was it was very strange. Um, like sat in the front row with these red and yellow banners that we were swinging around when our knight rode in front of us, like cheering him on and everything. Yeah. Um, and we had the meal there was basically this just fried chicken, but they didn't give any cutlery because it didn't exist back then. So we had to eat it just with our hands and <laughs> just it got kind of messy for all of us. But it was, it was very, very fun. Unfortunately, our night, the red and yellow night, didn't win a single fight. Um, oh. So it was a bit of a shame. But all the other ones were very, very cool. And uh, there was like this really cool story. It was, it was, it was a great experience. And uh, there were a couple of people there because we went with um, uh, Hat Films, who were part of York's cast as well. Mm -hmm. And... They kind of went into it like oh, I, I don't know about this guys it's, it feels kind of weird like i'm not sure how i'm gonna how i'm gonna feel about this one but by the end we were all like cheering and yelling for the nights and we were yelling <laughs> we were yelling kill him a little bit too much but it was great it was a lot of fun and i think we all had a, had a really good time and mark came out of it just extremely giddy and oh, he, he loved it a lot more than all of us <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's funny because uh, I just remember the next day when you guys were talking about that. I'm like, oh, we went for a really quiet dinner at a fine restaurant and then went to bed early <laughs> that night. Like, you know, yeah, really unexciting. It's a little bit different. You were having a lovely little meal with, with wines and cheeses. We were eating with our bare hands and roaring at nights on, on horses. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I feel like some of us may have appreciated that a little bit more, especially after previous night <laughs> <laughs> well you know what what happens at uh, the, the the descent stays at the descent um, yeah what happens in hell stays in hell yeah the first the first yeah the first the first layer of hell in avernus yeah. um yeah. 
It's funny that you were mentioning uh, all the stuff that you see in America that's just like it is in the movies. Because uh, Hollywood especially, right? Like, every square inch of L.A. has been in television and film. So you get this kind of weird feeling of deja vu in many places that you go because you've seen the streets before, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of this, this odd thing. But, like, as a Canadian going down to the States, I'm like, everything here is really similar to at home, like, <laughs> Like oh, okay. barely yeah. different at all. Um, the only so real Canada difference. Very similar. Again, that's another place I haven't been to. Like not yet. Um, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. One day, I really hope to. Canada's definitely on my list. It's. Uh, I I always hear good things about it, um, yeah. mainly from people in LA. Uh, most of the people <laughs> in LA were saying, uh, yeah, maybe maybe go somewhere else. <laughs> um, so that was. I mean, I I I really enjoyed it. I loved it. But uh, no, LA is fun. I like LA. It was a lot of fun, um, but uh, a lot of people were saying that Seattle's very nice, and I think that's where the Stream of Many Eyes took place. Uh, um, not the Stream of Many Eyes, but I think it was the Stream of Annihilation the year before. Uh, uh, right, so okay. when they announced the Tomb of uh, Annihilation book, it was a Seattle event. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of places. I also want to just book some time just to take it as a holiday as well, just so I can yeah. go there again and just really properly explore a lot of the places there. Cause yeah. There's a lot you can see. Um, whether you go to Seattle or uh, you know you come to Canada, you go to like Vancouver or something, or you're you know, or you're even just back in California. There's there's weeks and weeks and weeks worth of stuff you can check out if you want to. Yeah, um, the drive, like the everything that I got to see when I was there, because yeah. um, uh, like a couple of people went down to Santa Monica, and I really wanted yep. to go there. Um, Rihanna Santa Monica's got very nice. very burnt there, um, <laughs> so. That would have been fine for me because I'd already been burned first day, so that's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of the places I want to I want to see, and like you're saying, in similarities uh, to TV and film, for me it was GTA. <laughs> um, like so many places, I was just looking at and like I recognize this. Hey, that's is that Maze Bank from GTA Five? <laughs> um, yeah. It was very very weird similarities, um, but it was, it was very fun, very cool. Yeah. If you ever get the opportunity, uh, the drive along the coast from California all the way up, all the way to Vancouver is okay. awesome. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a long, you have to like driving, obviously, but like, it's just like, it's so <laughs> scenic and like, it's beautiful. Don't take the interstates. Uh, I mean, they're faster yeah. for parts of it, but um, that's just like, I don't know, eight, 12, a bajillion lanes going in two directions. It's not as oh, much right, fun. Okay. But uh, you ever get yeah. the opportunity to take that drive, especially the Pacific Northwest part of it, uh, like going up through Oregon and then into Washington State and then up to BC. It's beautiful. Oh, nice. Yeah. Highly yeah. recommend it. Before it, it burns down, good. since uh, California it seems to be on fire almost year round these days. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I keep hearing about that from afar, from thankfully from afar, I guess. Yeah. Um, I guess we won't have that problem in the extremely rainy England. It's raining, I think, right now, actually. Oh. Brilliant. Oh, good. That's on brand. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the one of the players in chat wants to know how Quill would have fared in the Tomb of Annihilation. Um, I actually I never really played in the Tomb of Annihilation. Um, oh, really? Yeah. The because uh, that was when the mini the High Rollers miniseries they did there was Uncharted Territories, and that was started just after I joined, so I wasn't quite on board with um, doing that series. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I didn't get to play in that one, um, but we did the the Stream of Many Eyes. What was the module from the Stream of Many Eyes? Um, Waterdeep Dragon Heist was Stream of Many Eyes. Oh, maybe I did do Uncharted. Maybe I did do that one. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the um, what was I going to say? Um, I don't know. I feel like what we did with Rogue's Gambit. Um, was it Rogue's Gambit? I've totally forgotten what series. Uh, Rogue's Gambit, I think, was the one where you guys did uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Because um, it, it oh, ended Dead with Reckoning Charlaxle and stuff, right? That was yeah, that one. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dead Reckoning was the one before that with the... Um, where I think we went back to Uncharted Territory. And that was um, when we played um, like these evil characters. So, <laughs> well, not evil, like anti-hero characters. Yeah. I feel like my character ended up being kind of a good guy at the end. Uh, not quite. So I don't think Quill would have fared very well in that at all. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't really know the module too well uh, to be able to say exactly how well he, well he would have done. Um, but I mean, he hasn't really fared well in Aroes, so <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the Tomb of Annihilation is a, uh, 
uh, a continent of undead, including mm-hmm. undead dinosaurs. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it's pretty intense with lots of ruins and other stuff. And then a, like a brutally unforgiving dungeon at the end of it. Uh, right. That is just freaking merciless. Uh, I'll go with badly then, I think. Yeah. Yeah, like um, I, when I started it, because uh, that's the one that we're still playing through with my with my home campaign. We're in the tomb now, and when we started it, uh, uh, the DM's like, "I'll give you guys some extra stat points because this campaign is rough." I'm like, "Awesome!" Wow, okay. I'm like, "He never does that," so that's interesting. So yeah, it's it's a uh, oh man, yeah, it's that's pretty... like when you get a load of uh, healing potions just before a big boss. Yeah, yeah, it's like here's a room <laughs> full of resources. You're like, "What's in the next room?" <laughs> yeah, what's happening here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that old that old gamer mentality. Like you're giving yeah. me stuff. Normally, I'm out of ammo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like with with the undead stuff, he might be okay because he's got um, like the uh, the channel divinity stuff that might work well with that. Uh, can he turn undead on a T Rex? Um, if you are high enough level to affect it, yes. But the the undead T Rex is a pretty high CR. Uh, uh, and I'll go with no on that. Also, one. <laughs> it vomits zombies. Um, like it's bursting oh. at the seams of them. And so like if you kill it immediately, it'll just pop and there'll be swarms of zombies everywhere. Or it'll just puke them on you while it's fighting you. It's uh, <sighs> awesome, actually. It's probably my favorite. It is both my favorite boss that has been put into our game. Um, yeah. Because it's just my, it just came together super well. Uh, but also it's one of the awesomest things in, uh, in the, that campaign. Oh, I don't want to go against it, though. No, no. Um, no. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. In my home campaign, we thought we knew where one was, and we avoided it. <laughs> like oh, that that right. was it. We did not deal with it. Um, although we did, there's a, there's also like this um, sort of T-Rex god thing uh, that we did kind of run into, and like we managed to hide in time. But like it's like a it's like a it's like a T-Rex, uh, but it's covered in feathers, and it can teleport. Um, oh, so it was like running down a highway, and then it's like poof, disappeared, and then reappeared a hundred yards away, doing something else. We're like, "Holy shit! <laughs> oh man, <laughs> get out of here! Let's go!" Um, yeah, but I can't remember the name you, of I it. I guess. Do you have to read through the, all the module books when you're planning all the events for Idol Champions and things? Um, uh, well, I don't personally. I read them for fun. But uh, okay. uh, yeah, our um, our design team uh, they go through all of it pretty pretty closely, and then we. The our live services manager Chris he plots out the the adventure for the game, um, mm-hmm. so it's like it's technically one that you could do as a player um, because the components are there, but it's different. Like there's a ton of stuff in Chult that we skipped with the Tomb of Annihilation campaign that's in game. Okay, um, yeah, you know, uh, you know, but if at the same time if you know the campaign, you'll recognize tons of stuff. Yeah, um, it's still faithful enough to. to know. Yeah, yeah, like you know, you go to you go to you know Kir Sabal. Uh, which is like the home of the Arakakra. Like, yes, there are Arakakra there, and you're yeah. dealing with gargoyles and stuff, and like that's based off of an encounter that's in that book, um, and and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, like my home campaign, we took a route so radically different from what's in the game that I didn't know any of it um, as we were doing oh, okay. it. Like we, yeah, we just haphazardly got there. Um, we yeah. spent, yeah, we spent way too much time just like trying to avoid stuff and ending up in other stuff and yeah killed a lot of pirates though it was good nice great yeah well, maybe the ghost of salt marshes for you then oh yeah uh yeah i'm stoked we just uh uh we have our our copies from the the swag bag um, nice yeah we're I, still... uh, I have mine downstairs i still need to read it i am really excited though because it just sounds exactly like my kind of thing uh ghosts um, and pirates and ghost pirates krakens yeah. big and small um yeah, I'm I pretty can't stoked. Wait for someone to say, you better start believing in ghost stories. <laughs> You're in one. Yeah, yeah. I was actually, um, uh, 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 I, was, I was like, the first thing that I did was, um, I don't know how, how well you know Lovecraft, um, but uh, uh, just taking, like, trans- transposing a bunch of the story from the Necronomicon into the setting. Um, yeah. And just. Yeah, I started like just like talking about it to the a group of people at work, and like they're like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, "Oh, am I the only one who's seen that movie and read the <laughs> stuff?" And but anyways, um, ghosts and pirates and ghost pirates. Like, really, what more do you need to know? Yeah, exactly. And, it sounds sounds very very cool, and um, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to implement it in some way. Oh yeah, uh, Rose. Well, I mean, if you ever go to sea, um, you can because it's got all the 
It's got all the stuff for boats, like oh, everything. And I know that D and D Beyond is uh, integrating it so that you can have like the ship you're on, and then it'll it will pay attention to the hit point totals of like the different decks and the different, you know, like your mast and your your whatever. Um, oh, nice. Uh, so that everybody can have you know ship to ship based stuff if they want to in the future. Um, yeah, it's a subtle well, plug I mean, for the book and D and D Beyond, ah, uh, but I don't work for either. <laughs> uh, but it's it's really cool stuff, and it's it's fun because like when you think about it, who doesn't want to uh, engage in some high seas shenanigans? Um, yeah, or well, I guess in a Eros sense, it'll be airships. Perfect. Um, That's even better because like then that. you could fall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is great. Well, that was episode one. Yeah. Oh, man. Falling out of an airship. That was that was that was an, that was a great open. Nice cold open. By the way, you're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> well it's like um have you had a chance to did you get to watch many of the games at the descent uh not really no because um i guess a lot of them were in those pods um so we could see see them from behind yeah. um like we i kind of stood awkwardly behind dragon friends for a bit um <laughs> and then i realized oh hang on a minute they're normally a podcast but now they've got the camera on everyone can see me um <laughs> So uh, yeah, I didn't really get to see much of those, and um, but yeah, it, it uh, enough to know to be terrified of what's to come in the descent. Yeah. Um, so that's that's fine. That's fine by me. I don't want to be too spoiled. I don't want to know any path that we could possibly take. I'm I'm really um, digging actually how uh, uh, like last year for the the stream of many eyes, you had a much bigger idea of what was going to be happening in, in Waterdeep Dragon Heist. And this time around with uh, Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus, not so much. You don't know how you're going to yeah. get there. Um, you only know that you're going to hell and that you're going to Baldur's Gate and like you don't know how those pieces fit together yet. And so you, you know, you're kind of going in cold at a lot more um, and it's kind of nice to just not have that info. Um, yeah. So That's 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 cool, yeah. Because um, I... When I said earlier, like... Um, Raynaud was the first character I made. It was the first time I'd ever played D&D properly, but yeah. I've always been interested in it. And um, it was way back in uni, like six or seven years ago, when I first bought, like, I think it might have been 3.5 or something. Probably, and, yeah. Um, I got that box and opened it up, and we had, like, a group of people. We were ready, like, I was going to DM it, and I opened the Dungeon Master's book, and it basically said, here are the rules. There aren't any rules. And I closed the book, put it in a box, and said, "I, I can't, I can't deal with that kind of pressure." <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I was just immediately like, "I mean, come on, lead, lead me a little bit." Um, <laughs> so I think now that I've kind of got more experience into it, uh, I like, I love that freedom and kind of understand what there are no rules means. <laughs> um, but just going into it fresh and having no idea what to expect, mm -hmm. it, was, it was spooky to begin with. So, uh, are you are you DMing any campaigns now? Uh, I was for a bit, a little while back, um, and hoping to get back into it. I think we all just kind of ran out of time a little bit, but yeah. um, now it's kind of cleared up. I want to get back to it. Um, and what I was originally doing was um, just the basic Lost Minds of Fandelver. Um, mm -hmm. Or Fandelver? I don't know. Pa I pronounced it a hundred different... Yeah, I, I pronounced so. it a hundred different ways in the, uh, in the campaign, and no one seems to have noticed yet. Um, but uh, yeah, we did that, and that kind of took a similar route where the players were kind of sort of following the right path. Yeah. Um, but then I ended up implementing a million different things on my own that I'm not even sure we were playing D&D &D by the end of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And like introducing characters with spells that don't really exist um, <laughs> because I thought it would be cool. Uh, and it was the kind of thing where as long as it's cool um, and the players are enjoying it, then I guess you're doing it right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, outside of that game, uh, I haven't DM'd anything else. Uh, but it was a great experience, and I would want to do it again. It's just a lot of pressure for me <laughs> to yeah. plan something, especially with if I was to do like a one shot on the High Rollers channel with those guys, uh, specifically Trot, mm -hmm. who could just take your idea and just run. The complete opposite direction. Yeah, I don't know how I deal with. Oh, that. he Pat Rothfuss is um, you, is what he does. Yeah, he would just he would just <laughs> completely destroy it somehow. Yeah, and uh, I don't think I have the ability to keep up with a player like that. <laughs> yeah, well, you could just 
run one of these. Yeah, it could do. Oh, it's, it's just there's like twelve one shots in here or something. Oh, is there? Yeah, I'm actually opened. It, I'm actually read through. To it's kind of like um, I don't know if you know uh, Tales from the Awning Portal. Um, but uh, yeah, be... there's like there's like a chapter on the town of Saltmarsh, and then there's sorry one two three four five six seven seven adventures. Um, oh, okay. And they're they're all for different level ranges, and they're from the like across the history of D and D. Like the oldest one is from 1981. Oh wow! Um, and so they're adapted for five E. But yeah. So, so is that something that you could just you could play through the entire thing with one set of characters? Or? Um, so you could do all the adventures with uh, one set of characters if you wanted to, but also it's perfect for one-shots. Um, I did a one-shot from uh, Tales from the Yawning Portal last year for people here in the office over lunchtime. It took us, because our, our, our lunches are like an hour, um, and so it took us a couple of months of pretty casual play, like a couple lunches a week to get through it all. Okay, um, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, that's what it is. A bunch of one-shots, so... Yeah, that you know, sounds great. Pirates. Um, pirates. Yeah, I do want to. I, I really want to read through it. It sounds it sounds super super cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you're saying, with uh, one hour lunch times and like playing it over a series of months, you never know how long anything is ever going to take. I remember it's true. when we first in the in my DM game when we first got to the town after the mine in uh, Lost Mines, mm -hmm. uh, after the cave in Lost Mines. Sorry. Um, I think we started just as they got into the town and then eight hours later or something stupid like that, like a really marathon session, all they'd done was speak to NPCs and <laughs> they loved it. It was great. Um, yeah. But there was like one combat in the entire thing and just the rest of it was just picking up quests and talking to all these other characters and yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's crazy how much freedom there is in all of that. and. Also, just the unknowing of how long people are going to take doing all of these different things. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just funny how that goes. It's, it's. I mean, you can. It doesn't really matter how much you plan. You can't predict what your players are going to do. Um, yeah, exactly. So, and you don't ideally want to railroad them into anything. So, just kind of yeah. roll with it and encourage them. <laughs> roll with it. Very nice. Roll with it. Yeah. Um, roll with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, are there any other? Because like we're you know approaching the end of uh, uh, of our scheduled time together. Are, are there any projects or anything you want to talk about? Um, not really. I think um, now that we're back from LA and all rested up, and no one is majorly ill like Mark was last week, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I think it's just finally getting back into Erois and continuing our adventure. And uh, next week we should be getting close to the forge, which is where. We've got a lot of plans to do some really cool things. I won't say too much in case no one's caught up. Um, and yeah, it's just uh, carrying on with high rollers and seeing where the campaign goes. And also uh, the start of the Descent miniseries, which Ooh. takes place as part of our previous campaign, filling up probably the only or taking the only loose thread from that entire series and just tying it up loosely, uh, tying it up nicely in a bow. Um, and finally getting a nice goodbye to all those characters after after a year of not playing them. Yeah. Um, so you're going, to be, you're going to be playing the same ones in uh, uh, Descent into Avernus? Uh, yes. So uh -huh. um, I'm going to be playing Reynard, which I did at the one shot in D&D &D Live. And yeah. Cam's there. And uh, Juto will be joining us, even though she couldn't for the uh, LA show, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Elora and uh, Rhiannon, who didn't have a character in Lightfall, has now made a character that hopefully will fit in really nicely with the party and is currently extremely creepy and <laughs> uh, strange. Is that the one with the black eye makeup that she was talking about? Yes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> she's got four skeleton friends that follow her around everywhere. So I think she'll fit in perfectly. But the other guys, not so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, really excited to finish up that last loose thread in the Lightfall campaign. And yeah, get back and continue the continuing adventures of whatever our party is called in Aroes. <laughs> cool. Well, um, yeah, it was wonderful to chat with you, and it was nice to connect with you guys uh, in person at uh, at uh, the descent. It's you know, yeah, it's nice to put faces and handshakes and in person hellos to uh, yeah. uh, email addresses <laughs> and and conference <laughs> calls. So. Um, yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And also, very, very cool that Quill is in the game. And oh, yeah, you haven't unlocked him yet. 
please please do he's actually very very cool both as a character the way he's been implemented all of his abilities the uh descriptions the story it all just works very very cool i've just noticed you've up leveled him up yeah <laughs> um rain some feathers down uh, oh there it is that's beautiful oh very cool um so yeah get quill while he's still in the game for the next um is it next wednesday or uh the event wraps up this coming monday at noon monday. pacific so what is that uh 8 p.m uh british summertime yeah something like that <laughs> but yeah um so yeah do do unlock him i'm really really happy with what's been done to get him into the game and how he fits um, and how he looks against all the other characters as well. Oh, great. he fits in great. The art team did a really awesome job. Yeah, uh, it's very, very cool. I'm a big fan of our, our uh, uh, the key art too. I'm just going to pop over to the, the splash screen. Yeah. Like, oh, he looks so so innocent, so pure, so scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got um, two eyes there and looking good. <laughs> two eyes. <laughs> Still yeah. one wing. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, get them unlocked, get them in your team, and get back for Sundays for a pie rollers, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, um, I don't see any further questions other than people saying hooray for idle champions and high rollers. Um, we're all pretty stoked to have Quill joining Ayla in the group, and uh, I'm yeah. not actually sure which one is next, but I look forward to finding out. Oh, there uh, is a next one. There uh, is a next one. There will be a next one. Yeah, at, at so some point. That. Yes, at some point. Yeah, I'm not spoiling anything, am I? I don't no. think so. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there will be there will be another. And uh, yeah, yeah, thank you for uh, taking time out of your evening to join us on stream. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, looking forward to connecting with you again soon. Yeah, look forward to it. All right. Cheers, Tom. Have a good one. Yep. You too. See you later. Ah, well, that was awesome. It's always fun to be able to use the magic of the internet to reconnect with people from across the globe. Um, had a lot of fun chatting and getting to know the High Rollers crew a little bit better at The Descent, um, which is just, you know, like many events, it's kind of a whirlwind of things just happening quickly. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. It's good to see everybody again. And uh, this time not get embarrassed by Mark during a, a live action role playing thing where um, you're told that you're not supposed to say anything and then he asks you. <laughs> Have a question related to the campaign that you know nothing about. So, um, yeah, lots of fun. Um, so I promised some winners. So I think I'm going to deliver some winners. So we have a number of these left, which is to say we're giving away all the rest of the ones we have right now today. But um, uh, we did a contest over the last week, and we have three different winners. Uh, the grand prize getting three of these. Uh, the runner-up getting two, and the uh, third uh, uh, place, uh, or second runner-up, or whatever you want to call it, uh, getting one of them. So, uh, I'm just going to pull up my, my list here, because I have a list that... Uh, oh, no, I didn't put it there. Looking for it. Alrighty, so... Uh, uh, so, our, uh, our, our first runner-up, our third, our third prize winner, uh, goes by Ryan BH from Woodstock... Uh, uh, in the USA, uh, which is to say Mars. Uh, Mars uh, won one of these. Uh, so congratulations, Mars. Um, we are uh, a huge fan and uh, uh, huge fans. And uh, so congratulations. Uh, our second prize, uh, whom we will be shipping two of these to, uh, is Eric T. from the Bronx. Uh, well, all three of our prize winners are actually from the USA this time around. Um, which should sh save us on some shipping costs because sometimes we ship things to Brazil and it costs more money. Um, and then finally, our grand prize winner is uh, this name, a Spartan Sea Dog 1337. So Spartan Sea Dog Leet from North Liberty, USA. Congratulations. You are the proud winner of not one, not two, but three uh, uh, Icons of the Realms, Waterdeep, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, Standard Booster Packs, uh, which we will be shipping to you uh probably this coming friday tomorrow um and then who knows how long it'll take there but you will get it um now i saw a couple people ask in chat 
uh, about uh, the stream code in the, the top left corner of the screen over there. Um, so it is now a 12 digit code and the, the code for this week is at Amadeus Fink. Um, now this will work in the new uh, redemption system that we are rolling out across all platforms. It's not currently available on all platforms. We're we're on it. It's a. It's you know. It should be available to Steam users, and it will be successively uh, available to everybody. Uh, and so from here on out, all new codes will be twelve digits. And uh, yeah, um, we're pretty excited to finally be able to roll that system out. Uh, devs did a, a killer job of putting it together. Um, it's awesome. It looks awesome. It has made all the groups happy in us allowing to being allowed to do it. And um, yeah, super stoked. Excited. Um, what else? We had a lot. We've had a lot going on over the last few weeks. Um, uh, OG seventeen question: From what we can see with the new code system, is all front end stuff. What changed to make codes okay with Sony and Apple, etc.? Um, I can't really get into what we did to make uh, uh, you know Microsoft, Google, Sony, and Apple uh, all happy. Um, but yes, obviously there was a front end change. Um, there's more to it than that, and there's there's like license agreement related things that I, I can't get into, but uh, yeah, we had to put a proposal together, make something that would work for all parties, get all their sign off, then build it. It is being built and being uh, uh, slowly released, and um, if we're lucky, at some point I might be able to um, uh, uh, drag one of the devs on screen uh, uh, to talk about it a little bit more. Uh, but that's really the information that I can share on that right now. Um, Let's see. Uh, is there an update on the coloring book? <laughs> Sorry about. Uh, there is not an update on the coloring book. Um, not beyond uh, what everybody knows already. Uh, but um, yeah, it's 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 coming. Uh, yeah. And again, it's not something that I can get into. But yeah. Uh, let's see. Just gonna try and go through these because I know I missed a few questions earlier. Uh, 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 when I was talking to Tom, uh, Giant Dwarf, I saw your statement about the high roller synergy pool feeling like a good direction for team synergies. Uh, I'm glad you like it. It's um, something we're looking at. We don't want, obviously, every uh, group, every team to have the same kind of uh, uh, buff exactly, but we do, like, we want them to, we want to, you know, acknowledge that these are characters that work together and should work better together. Uh, and I also saw somebody asking uh, who my uh, DPS character was in this formation because it's a little you know it's a little unconventional uh but it's a black viper formation um in fact i'm pretty sure if i hold down the left trigger boom apparently a hundred percent of the damage um that doesn't seem possible but i guess it's rounding up uh what else are the challenges a way to get more equipment easier um sort of i mean it's we you know we want people to have reasons to uh, you know, rather than leaving your game farming for days on end, having reasons for people to play different adventures and reset and try out different combinations. And, you know, we just wanted to offer more fun stuff for people to do in the game. And then uh, on top of that, um, it's nice to be able to have a way to uh, potentially impact uh, a show that we all like. And uh, I don't know how many of you saw uh, the most recent episode where, uh, you know, it was once again a, a good favor uh, that uh, our players predominantly voted for. But um, uh, both Amy and Kate calling us, calling, calling y'all out, asking for some more, uh, asking for uh, bad fortune this time around. So, uh, it, I mean, they're basically daring you to do it. And Amy called y'all cowards. So, you know. Vote for some bad fortune. I mean, I always do, but I like chaos. Uh, what can I say? Uh, let's see. Kenjia190-2001. I know this is too early to ask, but are the team making something with the descent to Avernus history? Uh, we will We will be... I can confirm. <laughs> I can confirm that there will be a uh, Baldur's Gate descent into Avernus permanent campaign added to the game in the future. Um that's it. That's 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 the that's, that's, that's as far as I can go with that uh, thread of uh, that topic at this point. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, any chance we'll be able to use the classic prompt dialogue for chess code redemption instead of this big slow cryptex? Uh, at least on those platforms, is the classic UI, not the gamepad. We already have a slow reset screen. That's more than enough. Uh, no, um, we're not going to have two versions of everything for you to run. Like you can, you can enter in the code. You can control V into the code. Like you can copy and paste in. So if you tab out and you copy a code and you tab back to the cryptex and control V and hit enter, it'll work. So. I feel like it's plenty fast. Um, tells that, uh, is the silver chest shiny random on a vent silver chest the same as a normal silver? If so, shouldn't it be increased? Um, the odds are the same. Uh, you know, it's it's per equipment card in chests, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't get better for events. Uh, hold on, I don't need to chat with myself. I'm already here, um, and I don't want to create an echo by clicking on the button. Uh, are you guys ironing out the bugs? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, so there's a there's a number of things that we're working on right now. A bunch of them are related to the uh, weekly challenges. Um, off the top of my head, I think it's something related to uh, the one with uh, Keelik and Evelyn not being completed after you play them through a bunch of areas or something. I'm not as familiar with it, but yeah, we're on it. Um, I mean, the devs are working on trying to get all those fixed. And as, as those bugs are fixed, we'll be rolling out builds to make sure that uh, uh, players are able to get through them. Uh, Smutik, Smutik, uh, will you make something like this challenges more often? Um, well, I mean, we're going to wait and see how this goes. We have, this is a 10 week um, uh, set of challenges. So we still have a, a quite a bit left over. Uh, we're going to, we're going to take feedback like we have with before at the, uh, the high rollers um, uh, integration that we did last year for the rogues gambit playthrough where there were there were challenges related to uh, high rollers um, we are kind of looking at all of these things so we're going to take feedback we're going to look at it uh, we're going to you know see what worked well and uh, yeah we will iterate on any possible future versions from there uh, let's see what are your plans for when year three rolls around and the three champions to unlock per event? Um, we're probably not going to get into anything uh, year three related until much closer to uh, September when year three will actually begin. We're still pretty focused on the next handful of events and, uh, you know, finalizing those champions and, you know, uh, et cetera. There is some, you know, that and quality of life things and features in the work. We don't we don't get too far ahead of ourselves on it. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of, it's a little bit too early to say. Uh, Calamity Jane. Uh, will there be more familiars added to the game or other ways to unlock current familiars? Um, so on the topic of familiars right now, what I can say is that, yes, we will eventually be adding more to the game, but that before we do so, we are looking at further iterating on the familiar system. Um, you know, there are some things we want to do to it. Uh, we've had a lot of players requesting things like familiar formation saves, etc. Um, and so we're, we don't want to add more familiars to the game before we've, you know, taken another look at that system in general. So that's kind of something that we put under the back burner instead of, uh, uh, you know, we've kind of pushed that a little bit lower down the priority list in order to focus on some other things first. Um, let's see, what else? I'm just going to... Um, this is kind of a strange formation. I'm going to... It's weird seeing Keelik with two eyes. Um, Moonbeam. Oh, I hadn't even upgraded Tyrell enough to have Moonbeam. Whew, I should pay more. I'm going to... You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to put familiars on all of them. That's pretty easy. Um... Now I don't know how many of you had an opportunity to watch the uh, the uh, main stage games either either live or as uh, vods since the descent um, took place. But oh man, where's there some cool stuff? Uh, huge huge fans of uh, all the all the talent involved. Just you know like both playing on stage, but also the DMs were super good. Um, I feel like my favorite individual episode my favorite individual one to have watched was uh the one that kate welch dm'd because it was just not at all what i or probably anybody else or even the players were expecting 
Uh, that was great. And then the 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 Chris Perkins one that both had a, a Jim Zub, Matt Mercer as Minsk and Boo, uh, uh, and also just like a, a, I don't know, an infernal war machine crash to, right off the bat. Like it was, that was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, if you're a fan of D&D content, I mean, all of these are essentially one shots. Many of them with uh, uh, actors or, or live, live, live stream players playing uh, characters that you know, uh, they were a blast. Uh, Esmerandia, you spoke a lot of helping to get some stuff on core care. Maybe just putting three item and no potion scroll so you stop getting troll purple. I'm not sure I understand your question, Esmerandia. Like, it doesn't really... I'm not sure what you're asking about. Uh, HK47 Terror. Question, what is the next event name? Uh, statement. The next event name is Dragon Down. Uh, uh, let's see. Scare Phoenix. Uh, champion skins for gems. Um, I don't know if we're going to be releasing any uh, champion outfits for gems. Um, you know, obviously right now players should be at the point where they're unlocking uh, champion Ashara. Uh, uh, if, they've, if they've played a lot uh, once the weekly... Uh, weekly quest system was implemented. Um, yeah, it, it, I don't know if we're planning on doing any champion outfits for gems. I mean, it's it's always a, a possible thing, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not something that's currently on the, the drawing board as far as I'm aware. Uh, Artifexy, uh, any talk about fixing how the program shuts down in Steam? It enters a zombie mode when I open the game on a new PC, making the process of restarting the game when I return kind of silly, particularly how that zombie mode blocks attempts for Steam tool factor authentication. Uh, if, the, if the program just closed when it was opened elsewhere, that would be way preferred. Thanks. Um, I don't know if we're planning on changing that. I mean, really, I mean, whichever platform you open it on, you can say to play from that one. I mean, yeah, that's kind of an odd thing. Like... I mean, it functions now, so I like I wouldn't say that it needs to be fixed. Like, yeah, um, that sounds like kind of an interesting request, but I don't know if that's something that we're looking at. Uh, do you feel you're getting closer to leaving early access? Maybe this year. Um, that is a Justin question, not a Dylan question. That only 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 Justin can say that kind of thing. Uh. uh Thunder Remix. When an event champion is stated to come out this year, does that mean the event year, year one or year two, or the actual year? Uh, that is a great question, and it's actually a topic where um, I don't know that <laughs> there have been more than one occasion where we have talked about a character coming to the game too early um, because you know there's a lot of stuff in flux behind the scenes, whether it's Bugs we need to fix, rolling out on new platforms, uh, you know, changes uh, with, uh, you know, characters that are in the pipeline because, you know, oh, hey, like, you know, we're going to do Spurt on this date instead of such and such or whatever, you know, like we're moving stuff around. Um, and so because the workings of our champions list is so fluid um, and is so very much subject to change, we've talked about a few characters way too far in advance because you know, we their so-called release dates, which are you know never in stone, anyways. But like you know, our our intended targets for them were missed. Um, so like when we talk about an event champion coming out this year, like that's like we are planning to have them come out in a, a certain window of time. It's not, it's not a guarantee. Uh, yeah, how much love will Binwin get as he really needs it? Um, that is a great question, and uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, <laughs> you know we acknowledge that when we made some adjustments to Barrowin to bring Barrowin more in line with uh, uh, Tyrrell and other uh, other buffers, uh, that Binwin was a, an unintended side effect, I guess you could say, in terms of how much it negatively impacted uh, our favorite trap smashing dwarf. Um, I know we have plans to work on him. 
but I don't know if that will be for Dragon Down or if it'll be a part of the year one champion balance update. It, it could go either way, and it really depends on how much time uh, Chris and Justin have over the next little while. Um, so he, he will definitely be done by the year one champion balance update, but um, it, you know he may get some tweaks or some love uh, for Dragon Down as well. Uh, AO Game 10, is there a Founders Pack end date? Um, summer. Uh, we are going to retire our Founders Pack in the summer. Uh, summer for us starts in mid-June and ends in mid-September. I don't have a date to give anybody for that. Uh, Garga, GG, any plans on making the game available for cross-platform? Uh, we do not have any plans related to that. Um, if you are a company like Epic Games and you have a multi-billion dollar a year in revenue juggernaut like Fortnite, um, cross-platform play is something that you can pull off relatively easily. Uh, when you're a smaller company, it becomes much more challenging. Um, and it's just not something we're looking at addressing um, at this time. Uh, a Space Monkey Pilot, who is your normal setup? Your favorite DPS, buffer, tank, and why? Um, that's a great question. I, I don't tend to play favorites in terms of uh, uh, the champions that I use because... I like changing things up on a pretty regular basis. Of late, I have been using a, a Black Viper formation um, because I could make it to my wall uh, uh, with a Black Viper formation. Uh, Archon, Archon tends to be categorically the strongest DPS for me if I'm working hard to build an Archon lineup uh, because Archon is bonkers good. Uh, is he my favorite DPS? No, he's not my favorite DPS. I like... You know, maybe it's because I had a hand in the Black Viper's design is why I like uh, Black Viper DPS so much. I also like that, you know, you're incentive incentivized to keep using her. I like that you're like collecting red gems and, you know, she's getting more powerful and she sneak attacks and, you know, she gets buffed when your character's getting attacked and like I just I feel like there's a lot of flavor and it's really interesting. Um, so, of late, uh, favorite DPS Black Viper, uh, favorite buffer. Hmm. Either Paltin or Spurt, probably, for my favorite buffer. Uh, favorite tank, Evelyn. Evelyn is the tank most of the time. Um, uh, Ayla is a fun tank. Um, Jamila is... I'm uh, sorry, not Jamila. Um, Naeli is always going to be fantastic. Grama is an awesome tank. In fact, Grama might be my favorite, even though I don't use Grama as much um, because I use Evelyn, but yeah. Um... Are there any plans for an in-game up update required notification? Uh, it's on our list. Um, I couldn't tell you an ETA on it, but yeah, it's uh, it's something that we acknowledge we need. Uh, Saute Monkey. I've been experiencing a lot of freezes over the past week or so. Any idea what could be causing it? Um, no. I mean, I, like I'm sorry that's happening. That sucks. Um, can you open an in-game support ticket and, uh, and start... Yeah, uh, ask the dev team for help. Because um, at least then they can see your account information and they'll have a lot more information to go on to try and help diagnose the issue than what I have. Um, I can confirm that it's not supposed to be freezing a lot. So, yeah. Uh, abstract Oak Bow, additional UI for inputting codes. A lot of people seem to have missed you can copy paste. Check out the UI, UI now to see. Um, you can also type it in, right? Like. If it's a phrase like at Amadeus Fink, if you're on that screen and you type in Amadeus Fink, the cryptex will adjust for it. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I know that uh, we're still rolling out the system across all platforms, and I know that uh, uh, you know there, there will inevitably be some bugs uh, to work through, but uh, yeah, it's, you know, uh, if a player for the first time they loaded it up on, on Steam, the new system, and they went in and they scrolled to find everything, that would be slow, sure. Um, but you can you can copy paste in, you could type in, and you could type in the code and hit enter and it'll work. So, you know, uh, I think once players get used to this new system, they're gonna have no issues. Um, yeah. Uh, Elvin Kneecapper, we don't have an ETA on it. We're, we're working on rolling it out on all platforms. like. This is the system that uh, everybody's going to have, so, yeah. 
Uh, Dunbar Levy, I've been, I've been experiencing a massive DPS drop somewhere over level 100 in all campaigns. No one could be causing that. Uh, I don't. There are so many factors in what your DPS could be. Like, so many factors. Um, if you think that there's a bug related to it, then you should open up a uh, an in-game support ticket and, uh, and and talk to the dev team about it. Because maybe, maybe you have found something new. Um, but in terms of, like, the DPS meter itself that, that fluctuates constantly, uh, displaying your DPS. I mean, it's a, it's based on an average of attacks leading up to it. Uh, it takes a lot of information into account across your formation and how quickly your characters are attacking and how hard everybody's hitting and how frequently everybody's hitting and how many you know like it's it's got a ton of stuff. So um, it could be many different things. It could be no issue at all and just there's a fluctuation. Like yeah. Now if you're losing absurd amounts of damage like i see somebody in chat talking about like e100 dps dropping to e80 like honestly that sounds like did you have potions run out um you know did you have like you know did you have spurt in ghost form and then he swapped back like there's just a lot of stuff it could be um so yeah uh Are there any plans of overhauling all background environment design? I love the character designs, but the backgrounds seem off. Uh, I think our backgrounds are pretty good. Um, and, you know, like, obviously tastes may vary, but, like, it's something that I've, you know, seen us make, you know, st steady improvements on. I like the way that this one looks right now. And what I like even more is, like, when we put together banners with characters on them, like, we have C-Team banners. I don't know how many of us, how many of you follow us on social media. But, like, you know, we have banners for each of the, the, the C team members. Um, we use these backgrounds just as, as they are, and they turn out fantastic. Like, they look great. Um, are we going to overhaul them all? No, uh, we're not. Um, but if you're finding issues with them, like it's not displaying correctly, or you're seeing seams where there's gaps in them coming together, uh, make a note of where that is, uh, like specifically which adventure and which area that's in, and we will look into to fixing it, because there aren't supposed to be any gaps or glitches. Um, but in terms of redrawing them, it's it's not going to happen. Uh, let's see. How many variants or levels do I have to reach to get a 10th adventure at the Sword Coast campaign? Um, you need to unlock Dritz. That's the that's the the tenth the tenth adventure. Yeah, um, and you can I think blame Justin for that one. Uh, will Kathris get a new skin related to the recent event with the C team? Um, <laughs> Uh, that is a great question. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't believe that Kathris has a planned skin that we are working on right now. Um, that's what I can say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just gonna let me make an adjustment and then I get a drink because when I talk a lot without consuming a beverage, it, uh, it, um, you know, it, uh, getting parched. Um, anyways, so are you in the gamepad version of the game? Because if you go, if you click start in the bottom left corner, it says a uh, version 0 0.226. That's the version of Idle Champions that I am currently playing. Um, now, so that's good for console and gamepad UI. Uh, with the other versions of the game, you can see the version of the game in, uh, you can either see it in the main menu, or you can like, if you pull up the change log, it should say the version name, and, and in theory, it should also have the most recent change log notes. So, uh, Darkest Argentum, that'll, that hopefully helps. Um, Mage Pie, any plans on being able to replay old variants? Um, yes, we do have plans related to that, um, but nothing I can share. Uh, tells that, uh, sometimes the overwhelmed light blue circle remains after you switch levels. Changing slots and clearing up, is that a bug? Um, it's not supposed to persist um, once you have, once your character is no longer overwhelmed. So yeah, that sounds like a bug. I'll just make a note for the, uh, the dev team to uh, take a look at that at some point. Um, oh, 
Uh, yes, uh, sometimes the change log has two versions mentioned in the entry, so I'll revert's true. Um, but it should have the most recent version listed. Uh, should. But yeah, just, I mean, you can just hit start and go into the menu on any version of the game and just see which version you're running. Um, yeah. Da, 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 da. Um, okay. Let's have another drink. Uh, I'm checking out my uh, my uh, Death Saves Rage shirt, the Barbarian, swinging swinging some axes. Uh, pretty stoked about this. It is one of the most comfortable shirts I've ever. Uh, well, one of the most comfortable T-shirts I've ever had. It's awesome. Uh, let's see, Shatterhand. The way my time to actively play works means that were I to reset daily as requested by the current event, I would be gaining very little favor. Any chance of having the ability to run two campaigns at the same time during event? Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, we don't have plans to uh, have it in any way set that uh, that uh, uh, <laughs> you could run two simultaneous uh, campaigns or adventures, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, you don't, first of all, uh, more points are available through our weekly challenges than are needed to earn all of the rewards. Uh, so if you miss a point here or there, um, you should still be able to get everything provided you don't miss more than like 400 points, I think it is. Um, but also like to get the major rewards, the, the gold, uh, the golden epic Kronar and, um, the champion Ashara skin, like the two rewards that you can't get any other way. Um, you know, you don't need to do everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, alrighty then. Grassy Knoll. DPS swings are making the game unplayable. There is no pattern. In other words, jumping levels does not work always, or changing slots. I've tried everything. Sadly, this always happens very late in levels with E20 to E30 swings happening super frequently. Um, yeah, uh, uh, I see that Erica responded in chat uh, to get you to support, put in a support ticket. But yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's... I mean, it's just without being able to look at your account, it's hard for us to know what it is, but uh, we want to help, so yeah. Uh, why Verney win? Uh, while I assume that Descent into Avernus is going to play a part in your future quests, what about the Dragon of Ice Spire's Peak from the upcoming Essentials Kit? Um, that's a great question, uh, because like we we also do not have um, either the, 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 the Lost Mine of Pandelver in any way integrated into the game. Um, there's quite a few other things that we also don't have. We don't have um, any of the adventures from Tales from the Yawning Portal. We don't have um, any of the 5th edition D&D books released previously to um, Tomb of Annihilation as ca campaigns that are dedicated campaigns. Though we did um, integrate a version of the Curse of Strahd campaign into our Grand Tour of the Sword Coast. Uh, which we may also do for other adventures. Like maybe we will take a do detour into the Lost Mine of Pandelver. Or you know, a brief uh, trip out on the high seas as per a uh, Ghosts of Saltmarsh uh, uh, you know, series of adventures. But um, you know, what I could say is that the, the Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus permanent campaign will be a permanent campaign. Just like Tomb of Annihilation and Waterdeep Dragon Heist are um, like that's where that will fit other you know other 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 campaigns whether we're like taking a step back and looking at something like we're looking into uh you know trying to integrate some of storm king's thunder into it or uh you know horde of the dragon queen uh, that kind of stuff would most likely which is to say this is not written in stone this isn't a plan this isn't anything but like chances are we would probably do something similar to what we did with curse of strahd uh where you know like we put some of the adventures into the grand tour of the sword coast campaign but, you know, again, like that's, that's totally up in the air for now. Um, uh, scoop a noob, newbie here. Why is your UI so much cleaner than mine? Um, this is the uh, gamepad UI. Uh, I'm playing on Steam with the gamepad UI. So I have my, my good old trusty Xbox controller here uh, because I just, honestly, the, uh, the, the, the Xbox One controllers just feel actually nicer than the PS4 controllers do. Uh, whereas every previous generation, I preferred the PlayStation controller. I like this Xbox One more. 
just feels a little nicer. Um, anyway, so I'm just using the gamepad UI. Uh, MagePie, can we expect updates to the tutorial to explain things such as who is a tank and what an overwhelm debuff is? Uh, that is a great bit of feedback that I'm going to pass along to the dev team because I don't know what our plans are related to that. Um, Aaron C123425, what phone specs would you suggest in order to stop crashes? Um, you definitely need to put in a uh, support ticket because I, I don't know anything about uh, uh, what your device is. Um, I do know that because presumably you're using an Android device um, because we're not available on iPhone, uh, only iPad. Uh, so the Android devices are most likely. Uh, the specs vary, specs and screens and just phones vary so wildly across uh, the entirety of what is what what supports Android that uh, I, I can't help you at all. Uh, you, you definitely need to put in an in-game support ticket and uh, see what uh, uh, what the devs can do to help you. Yeah. Uh, righty. I disagree on the controllers, but to each their own. Hey, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I mean, I've been using PlayStation controllers for, like, they haven't iterated very much on their design for, what, 20 years now? Um, yeah, yeah, 20 years. No, more than 20 years, like 23 years since the PSX came out, 23, 24 years. Um, and like the PS4 controller is still very, very similar to the first PlayStation controller. Um, and I like the controller a lot. Like I have no complaints about it. I just, I have bigger hands and um, the Xbox controllers have always been larger. And, uh, but they've always felt too large to me. Whereas the Xbox One is the first time that I've, uh, uh, you know, played one that uh, feels like this. Yeah, it's just it's it's the first time that I've felt an Xbox controller where I preferred it uh, to the PlayStation controller, but that's just for this generation. Like the other ones, like does anybody remember the original Xbox controller that was like it was like two of these side by side? Like it was like this, it was like bigger than most consoles, and you're just like holding this giant heavy thing in your hands. Oh man, I can't believe I even gamed with that thing. Uh, Space Monkey Pilot. Uh, earlier, you brought up your champion's contribution to overall damage. How did you do that? And it can it be done not in the gamepad UI? Uh, so it's currently a feature that's only available in the gamepad UI. Um, but basically, you just hold down your your left trigger, and it brings up this little stat screen. Um, and then, not coincidentally, um, you know, this is also where you can do your formation loading and stuff if you're playing on a, a gamepad UI or on console. Um, it's so it's something that we're looking at adding to the uh, the regular interface, but it's not uh, necessarily something that uh, is going to come soon because there's a bunch of things we want to do. We want to take a lot of the lessons we learned developing the the gamepad UI um, and pull it. Uh, you know, pull those lessons learned. Um, into the original interface, but um, yeah, I have I have nothing further to share on that. Uh, are there any plans to migrate to the iPhone? Uh, I, I can't comment on that. Uh, potential platform stuff and so on uh, is not something I'll ever be able to talk about before we have official announcements. Uh, Dylan, crashes happen on every platform. It's enough to read Discord discussions, mobile, Steam, consoles, and obviously, yeah, I mean, yeah, our, our game, you know, sometimes crashes. It really depends. Uh, what isn't helpful for us feedback-wise is like we need context. Like, if you are a player who is having the game crash or you're having issues on your phone or whatever, um, you know, we want to help you. We really do. Uh, so, but the, and the best thing that you can do is, if you're having these issues, open an in-game support ticket and give us as much context as possible. Because while we can look at your account and see what device you're on, and you know, we can see a lot of other information. Um, you know, what are you running? Like, we, like, we want to help make the game better too, and you can help us do that by, you know, providing as much context as possible to what your issues are. Um, Whizfish, is the look of the gamepad UI coming for keyboard and mouse? Um, this is, so the Steam version of the game has access to the gamepad UI. Um, you just go into your settings, and it's it's down here at the bottom, display in gamepad UI mode. Uh, when you toggle it on and off, it will shut down the game and then the next time you load it it'll be in the other interface it doesn't just 
swap over, um, you do have to shut it down. Um, so yeah, um, if you play on Steam, you can play with the gamepad UI. You just need to have a controller plugged in. Um, and so the buttons should change to like PlayStation or Xbox buttons um, if you have it. But you have to have a gamepad plugged in. If you don't, then it, it, it won't work. That's not something that we're able to turn on and off. Um, yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, please look into a, as tidy a UI as is offered by the gamepad UI. Um, yeah, uh, they did a, you know, the art team and the devs did a great job of the gamepad UI. Uh, I think it looks really fantastic. And uh, I'm really excited to see what they do with future improvements because, uh, yeah, it looks great. I love these portraits too. They look so good. Spurt's confused face with his, yeah, just awkwardness. Kathrissen is just like, creepily happy look I'm gonna kill spurt well feathers rain down boom um, all right what else we got just want to double check that I didn't miss any of the questions earlier scrolling through it seems good cool 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 uh, all righty bum 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 Ayla's head is too big on the gamepad UI that doesn't look too big from here. She's got a lot of hair, you know? It's like the, the huge red hair and the braids, you know? And she's a wood elf, she's got big ears, so it might make her head look a little larger, but her head is, you know, it's congruent to other head sizes. Who are the weekend champions? Oh, you know, Summon Satan, that was actually spoiled in the Discord earlier because somebody, uh, as soon as we pushed out a build that said uh, what the weekend promo was going to be, that somebody found it. Um, but um, just in case you aren't in our official Discord, which you should be, uh, discord.gg slash idle champions, um, this coming weekend, uh, the, the champions that are a part of that uh, uh, buff are uh, Donar, Naeli, Ayla, Wolfgar, and Jamila. So, yeah, uh, it'll, it's, a, it's a weekend of rage, a raging weekend, something rage related, some kind of ragey weekend of rage. Um, yeah, pretty excited about that. Uh, an issue I came across with the gamepad UI is when the rat, spider, seagull, etc. goes past and it says press those buttons, it does not seem to work for you. Um, are you sure you don't have a controller issue? I've heard of bugs related to that before and like it varies. Anyways. Um, so because nobody's asking questions, I'm just going to talk about our in-house D&D campaign because I haven't lately and I, I can't remember if I did last week or not. So... Um, yeah, we are. Uh, we're still at Argon Vost Holt. Uh, uh, we killed the giant that was raining boulders down on the castle while we were in it, and, and so we went up top. We killed him. Um, we had an epic moment where we were fighting him and his horde of icy minions, um, and uh, you know, a, a, a suggestion was used that he sit down on his throne while we were. Uh, 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 while we were fighting and um, thanks to some barge shenanigans that we have since learned isn't something that you can actually use do with cutting words um, we got him to go sit on his throne while we spent the rest of the time finishing off his minions and then we fought and killed him well, fought and killed him um, and it was it was a good battle it was a good battle and uh, 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 you know a, uh, uh, an, an exciting victory for the team um, <laughs> And we've just kind of since been prepping, trying to figure out our ne next move. Uh, and uh, we have now discovered that uh, there are some... Uh, 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 there's, some there's a big old room of treasure deep beneath uh, the, um, the mausoleum on the Argonvoss grounds where there's the cadaver... Well, cadaver. The, the, the skeleton of... Uh, a, a dragon and its and its horde buried below and uh, we're gonna see what we can do to maybe get some of that treasure 
<laughs> which is probably a terrible idea. Uh, but it seems like whatever we do, we're probably going to in some way like resurrect a Draco Lich or something awful. So we'll figure it out. But yeah. Uh, the Eternal Student. The different types of elf, Eladrin, Drow, Wild, count as different races for the racial diversity boon. Uh, no, they're different types of elf. Um, yeah. I mean, the elf is the race, and then Drow or Eladrin or Wild Elf, that's the, the sub-race. Um, so, yeah. Um, it should uh, they shouldn't count as different ones in the sense in that sense, but I don't know. I'll have to double check because um, there are some contexts where it matters that they're different, and some where that doesn't. So um, I will uh, see if I can't get a definitive answer. Uh, let's see. Do you ever plan on implementing non-potion based uh, um, game speed boosts? either free or paid um so at this time no uh yeah speed potions are you know intended to be a, a finite resource um yeah no uh confirmation from the dev team uh, eternal students uh yeah uh drow aladrin etc uh, they're they're elves they're just elves um so that's what I expected, but I wanted to make sure because sometimes I say, no, it's not a thing on stream, and then I'm immediately proven wrong. So, yeah. Um, any plans for a lock for familiars on Steam so your clicking doesn't accidentally try and move them? Um, you know, I don't know if that's on our feature list for when we're looking at iterating on the familiar system, but I will add it if it isn't because, yeah, I mean, nobody wants to accidentally move one, right? Uh, for people who don't play D&D, &D, they may not know that a drow or an eladrin is an elf. That's true. Um, you know, the elven subraces are, uh, are pretty different. Um, half elves are a distinct species from humans and from elves, which is why they don't get either human or elf buffs. Um, you know, it's just kind of one of those interesting things uh, in the world of D&D. Half elves, uh, yeah, like Garwar already started posting about it. Half elves tend to be shunned by both societies and count as neither. It's true. Although they're like one of the best adventuring races if you're making a character, like two to charisma plus one to two of other stats and you get all the benefits of being an elf and you get access to feats like elven accuracy, like half elves are OP. Um, just saying. Uh, Skip Wilson, will all new chess codes be redeemed using the new combination wheel system from here forward? Uh, moving forward, yes. And then on top of that, like in addition, um, codes that have not yet expired using the previous system that are 16 characters, you will still be able to enter them. You'll just have to enter them using their own button as opposed to using the cryptex that only has 12 digits. Um, but yeah, um, all future codes will be 12 digit cryptex codes. Uh, from here on out so the the stream code in the corner uh, um, is no longer a steam code it's a stream code so uh, once your version of the game has the system in you should be able to enter that in uh, provided it's before june 7th at 1 p.m pacific uh can we get better disclosure on the all walks of life classy gathering and the slow and steady blessings um I need a Justin for that if I'm going to talk about that one because, yeah, um, it's probably a good idea to do that. Um, so I'm just going to make a highlight here. Um, and if I'm really lucky, Justin will just show up in this room and talk about it, but he's probably busy. So um, I'll just make a note, Giant Dwarf, because, yeah, we should. Uh, all right. It would be nice for the Black Viper to see which buffs are being increased by Orb and Infamy, like Archon. Um, yeah, that's a great point because it's kind of, it doesn't really show up the same way. Um, it's funny because I, I tend to only play using this interface while I'm on stream. But like incoming abilities, it's not, yeah. I mean, you can see the increased damage of Black Viper by this percent for even champion, every champion not adjacent to Keelik, and then the current bonus, but you don't say how much it's improved by uh, Aura of Infamy. So, yeah, I will 
make a note to see if that is, has been added to the features list or not. Um, yeah. Wow, it's quarter to three already? I can't believe I've been on stream for an hour and 45 minutes. Happy day, huh? Uh, let's see, what else we got? Um, oh yes, yes, the final the final raffle has begun. Um, you know, uh, uh, like uh, recent raffles, five uh, gold supply chests filled with potions, potions, potions. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of that's a lot of potion cards for for one lucky player. So, good luck and congratulations. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, is there anything else pressing that I need to be going over right now? Um, and before I forget, because this has been sitting here this patiently this whole time. Um, so as part of the descent, <laughs> uh, we had uh, coloring sheets of uh, three of the C team members, and uh, Minsk and Boo. And what we were doing is uh, players who are taking part in the uh, the game, going through the market in the wandering market. Um, could pledge allegiance to either Mad Maggie and the Marauders or Mahadi, uh, the Rakshasa that ran the market. And then you could do a quest line. And the players who came to us um, wanting our help with that quest were given coloring sheets like this one um, to fill out. And what we would do is like, you, if, you, if you come back with that sheet colored, we will give you whatever it is we have that day. You know, they were infernal pieces of parchment with you know, half of a contract or half of a weapon or whatever. We had a bunch of different things. Uh, and we gave people three crayons to use to do it. So they had a, a red, a yellow, and a blue. And from there, they had to color. And, like, coloring with three primary colors is kind of difficult. Um, and uh, what I have in my hands is uh, one of our one of the people who was there, like, spent, like, 20 minutes coloring this Minsk. And it was actually kind of mind-blowing just how good of a job they did like just with red blue and yellow managed to color and shade minsk with flesh tones and you know like sort of like this uh you know like glints in the armor it's like golden and like you know like <sighs> this guy knew color well enough to get pretty darn good color across the entire thing um and then told us that he's a professional colorist for a company like that's what he does and it's like oh well no shit um yeah uh his name is uh as as kaishu um i can't read his last name from his writing but um yeah holy crap right like um that's uh, that was that was the bar. Kaishu set the bar for coloring in one of our coloring sheets with three colors. Like I don't even know if mine would look this good if I had pencil crayons with like two hundred colors in the set. So, wow. Um, I just had to share that because it's been sitting here looking at me this whole time, and I just I wanted to talk about it. Um, yeah, and I I don't want to talk about those things too far in advance because that. Uh, I can easily limbo under that bar. Yeah, you and me both, Garwar. It was, uh, uh, yeah, that was, uh, it was a fun event. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's very, very cool and interesting to get to be a part of that kind of D&D &D experience. I hope that next year, whatever we're doing, we get to be more part of the story again. Like, last year at the Stream of Many Eyes, we had a booth in the water deep, like it was a courtyard in water deep by one of the entrances and by the by the foot of one of the, the walking statues. Uh, and the Yawning Portal was right there and like, you know, we were there and Beelon Grimms was beside us and Roll20 was on the other side of us and, you know, like we had our own sort of storefront. And, um, you know, we didn't get to participate in any of the LARPs, at least not on purpose. Uh, but this year we did. And, like, I would love to merge the two of them where we have, like, a storefront so that we have a space. But then also uh, we can, you know, interact with people. And, like, it just just give us the cliff notes. Like, give us the, give us an idea of how we're participating in advance, uh, like, this year and iterate on it. And it was a lot of fun. So I, I, I can't wait to see um, what Greg and the, the rest of the team have planned for this year. And, 
uh, hashtag praise, praise Tito because it was it was awesome. The, you know, the descent was a lot of fun, and like on top of that, like the, they lost power on the Saturday night during one of the shows, and like not just them, but like the entire block that the studio was on lost power, and like so the next morning. Um, when they were setting up for all the live stream booths, they were setting up a lot of it from scratch because, hey, like everything lost power. And so they're resetting everything up. And they only ran like, I don't know, like 20 minutes, maybe a half hour behind for the day, for the day's schedule for that. And like, when you think about how, like, getting everything reset, like, kick ass team, like, uh, everybody at, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, if it was just staff at uh, the at Line Two Hundred Four Studios, or if it was, uh, uh, you know, who whose teams were responsible for what specifically, but like, killer job. They 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 kicked ass all the way through, and um, you know, uh, yeah, uh, there was there was there was probably a company involved, but I don't know all of them, right? Like, it was Sun Reaver that did the um, the like the cosplay kind of. Um, uh, interactive event and they did an awesome job and I want to say it was triple clicks that was running the event and they did an awesome job and then there's like the staff and like all the all you know like all the people that were working everybody down to the grips to the people who are like you know nailing nails into boards and carrying chairs like everybody did a killer job so it was really like just a like a, a world-class studio that threw all that stuff together it was awesome so kudos to them uh, Thank you for uh, uh, for allowing us to participate, and we look forward to being able to do it again. Um, uh, question: I had a run with Black Viper, and I can get to Collector before level ten. I checked her gem count on this run at level seventy six and zero drops. Uh, that sounds like crappy RNG, Giant Dwarf. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Um, Space Monkey Pilot, just curious. I heard a rumor that the champion Dragon Bait may be coming soon when checking the Idol Champions Gamepedia. It looks like a page is set up waiting for him to be introduced. Are you able to confirm or deny his appearance in the future? Um, at this point, I can confirm that Dragon Bait will someday make an appearance as a champion in Idol Champions of Forgotten Realms. Beyond that would be premature to say, and I'm sorry I've said things before. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Who won the thing? Just looking. Waiting for it. Oh. B. O'Neill. Congratulations to B. O'Neill. Um, yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. I mean, by the numbers, I should have four by that point. Um, I'm not sure, Giant Dwarf. I mean... Sometimes you can just like have a crappy run where you get almost no gems for uh, Black Viper, and sometimes you get tons, and it just it just kind of varies. I mean, the nature of RNG is that you're going to have good and bad runs in that way. So I just cross my fingers for you that your odds improve because overall it's going to even out to the the rate as displayed. But yeah, cool. Any plans for a Kenku champion? I would love to. Oh man, Kangu are so fun. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of there are a lot of um, uh, uh, a lot of the uh, the monstrous races that there are very few characters that would make suitable champions in lore, um, if any, and very few uh, players who play them on shows, whether it's you know it's you know a podcast or a live stream or whatever, like you know not a lot of representation for some of those monstrous races and yeah we, we, we want to include more of them uh, so we will be uh, our next champion um, uh, joining Binwin in Dragon Down will be of a monstrous race um, and that's about all I can say on that subject right now so uh, you know this has been our show uh, for Thursday May 30th 2019 uh, thank you all so much for joining us uh, for participating uh, in both the Idol Champions and Dungeons and Dragons communities you guys are awesome uh, this show exists because of a number of amazing 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 folks 
behind the scenes, uh, including my co-producers, Erica and Clive, as well as our partners at Dungeons & Dragons, uh, Greg, Bart, Pelham, Allison, Shaoling. Uh, huge thanks to Tom Hazel uh, for joining me on stream from across the world uh, uh, from, his, from his bedroom in the evening. Um, yeah, the internet is awesome, and it's really cool that we could do that. Uh, Welch's Game Juice is coming up next, followed by Critical Role at 7. Uh, thank you all so much for joining me today. Uh, good to see you. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody.